The all new Toyota Prius looks nothing like you've ever seen before. It's, you just gotta see it. Yeah, okay, this is going on the radio, so, um, you're gonna need to describe the all new Prius to people. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Vroom, swoosh, uh, use your words, please. Oh, oh, got it. Here we go, wowzers! Ugh, I give up. The all new Prius. It's indescribable now. Toyota, let's go places. Vehicle inventory may be limited. Check with your Toyota dealer. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Peak Northwest, an outdoors and travel podcast by the Oregonian and Oregon Live, dedicated to the adventure and exploration of our beautiful Pacific Northwest. I'm Jamie Hale. And I'm Vicki Connor. Together, we take you to some of the most beautiful and interesting destinations in our region, discussing where to go, what to do, and places to see. And today, we are back with another episode of our sub-series, My Epic Adventure, where we chat with coworkers and friends about some of their favorite trips and their accomplishments. That's right, Vicki. And today, we are headed out to Portland's Forest Park to the famous Wildwood Trail, and joining us is none other than Noelle Crombie, Enterprise reporter here at the Oregonian Oregon Live, and her good friend, Rachel Dumont. Noelle, Rachel, thank you both for joining us. Glad to be here. Thanks for having us. So, Noelle, I hear that you two not only hiked a section of Wildwood Trail, but you hiked it in its entirety. <laughs> so uh, how many miles is that? Well, first, I want to say I appreciate that in the introduction, you characterize these talks as a sort of a look back at an accomplishment, because I feel like this uh, hike that we did that day qualifies as as a pretty significant accomplishment. <laughs> uh, the hike in its total was um, 30-ish miles. And, um, you know, it was an idea that I, 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 I texted... Rachel, who's my very good friend, and said, I have an idea for, for us, and we'll, <laughs> we'll discuss it over dinner. <laughs> and, and so I got to her house, and she's like, what's the idea? And I, I said, well, what if we walked the whole length of the Wildwood Trail? Um, and, and I guess my, my thinking on why that would be so great is that it, it, it felt like for, for someone like me, who is not going to like climb a mountain or do anything that requires any technical expertise. Um, and, you know, I, I like, like being outside, but like just enough, you know, I, I don't want to do anything too, um, too out there, too Oregon. Okay. So I don't, I don't really want to like have to put on crampons or, or whatever they're called. I don't want poles. I don't want to be like super cold. I'm super hot. You know, so this was like a really long walk. So I'd be walking, but then it would be really long. So and it wasn't too far from home. So these things uh, seemed to like add up to be kind of just like, like it really did seem like it could be a really good adventure, but also kind of within reach. Um, and I asked Rachel if she was game and she was like, let's do it. Wow. And Rachel, how did you, how did you respond to that? Like, what was your first thought when Noel asked you if you want to walk the entirety of the Wildwood Trail? Yeah, I didn't hesitate at all. Um, I was really excited. Actually, I was sort of surprised um, by the request because it, you know, it, it it's a long walk. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I had done a couple of kind of nutty things like this before. Um, I mean, this is borderline this is this is, this was a an epic hike. <laughs> um, and I had done a few things like this before, of course, 30 years earlier. But, you know, I still feel, I still feel young. I don't think cognitively I've, you know, I'm, I'm still, I still feel like I'm in my twenties and even my body's pretty sound. And, and so I just, I didn't hesitate at all. I was excited by the idea. It's amazing. Noelle, I remember, I remember this. I remember you coming up to me in the newsroom and just sort of like, you kind of just kind of asked me about it. Just like, you know, what do you think about this idea of, of walking the Wildwood Trail? And I, I remember being like, wait, the enti- you're going to walk it, the entire thing in one day. And I remember thinking, that's ambitious. I wouldn't do that. That's that's a long, that 30 miles in a single day is a lot, not just on your body, but like to have the daylight to do that, you really have to make sure you <sighs> you have you have enough. It has got to be in the right season, the right conditions, the trail's got to be open all the way. You know, there's a lot of factors at play here. So 
as you were beginning to, to, to make this plan, what was going through your mind? How did you, did you set yourself up here? Well, I kept coming back to the idea of, of, uh, of this being a walk. And so, I mean, I felt like it was within my grasp <laughs> and while I'm, you know, I do exercise, I wasn't really concerned. I wasn't, I didn't think this was like pushing the, me physically too much because it was a walk. So I, I'm not sure I fully grasped how, how arduous this was going to be um, because it was just going to be like a long walk with Rachel and, you know, and so it, it felt kind of far away in, ter- in terms of, you know, the, the strain this was going to represent and, and that it actually turned out to be. Um, and, and I don't know, there was a lot of planning. It was kind of, you know, we picked a, a really nice fall day and, um, and we did, you know, we, we prepared um, some, you know, a, a lunch and, and we thought about snacks and water and we knew we wanted to get a really early start and we're both really early risers. So I knew that getting out, we would be, we'd be ready to go really early. That wasn't going to be, none of those things were like challenge challenges um, in my mind. I actually didn't really anticipate much of a challenge. I just wasn't thinking about it in that, in that way, because again, I just kept coming back to this felt within my grasp as a walk. And um, you don't realize though, as you're heading into the, you know, 20 mile mark of a walk in a day that actually this is a really significant physical endeavor, but I don't know that it would have changed my planning. Um, although I, 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 as we were ending the walk, which was like, we're never doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say that? Really? Yes. <laughs> this will be our, our first and okay. our, and our last time. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe just that one. <laughs> we could cross that one off the list. I'm up for another. <laughs> so um, I guess for listeners who might not be familiar with Wildwood Trail, can you tell us where exactly you started and where you ended, um, Rachel? Yeah, I can, I can do that one. Well, I think this is a really important question because I think that um, there's definitely – a better direction to go in. (laughs) Um, So we started off at the Hoyt Arboretum. There's a parking lot up there and that's where we parked. I think we hit the trail at about about 5 a.m. So parking was not an issue. So started at uh, the Hoyt Arboretum and we just followed the trail and it's very well marked. Um, Although we did have, we did have maps. We had Uh, I had an REI map. REI sells these really nice, sort of durable maps of Forest Park, the entire network of trails. Uh, And I think Noel had an app. We headed south to north, and the there was a parked car that we had left um, the night before uh, on Newbury Road, which is I think it connects up with Skyline, so it's beyond maybe even the St. John's Bridge. Um, and it, it kind of runs up from Highway 30, I believe, up to Skyline. So the reason why I say that that's a really important direction to go in uh, is because it's quite a descent from the Hoyt Arboretum um, in that direction. And I think doing it in the reverse direction, where that's kind of the end of your 30 miles, it would be challenging to do that climb after you've already put in, you know, tens of miles. <laughs> okay, well, so take us through this day here. So you're starting at the Hoyt Arboretum. It's it's early in the morning. Well, first of all, when you say early, what are we talking about? Five, six we left our homes around four thirty. I, I, I'm yeah. guessing that. Um, I think I think we were on the trail by five, and um, I mean that's my favorite time of day. And so I really like to be up when you know the world is still kind of just getting started. And um, and so actually that was my favorite part of the hike because we were outside and we were we had a lot of you know that kind of it's like at the very beginning of a road trip. It's very exciting. And um, it, it had that kind of energy and um, and it 
We, we encountered some early morning people out on runs and walks, but not many. In fact, we didn't really encounter many people the whole day, honestly. Um, but we, you know, we, we got underway and um, fairly quickly, you know, we just hit the trail and, and made our way from Hoyt Arboretum. And, you know, it really um, felt like that kind of energy lasted for a long time. Like we, we were, we we're on this adventure and it was, it was going to be a, a good story and it was going to, you know, we, we kind of had our, our, our families were like, and Rachel and Noel are out on the trail today, you know, and, you know, it was kind of like, we're out on this, this little journey together and how will it end up? You know, just had that sense of anticipation at the beginning. And again, it was so easy to get to and, and it, it didn't feel like we had been dropped into, you know, some central Oregon rural wilderness. It was just, you know, home was only, you know, a short drive away. So everything felt, just felt like very doable. And I would say that feeling continued for at least 10 miles. And, um, <laughs> and then, um, and then, and then it becomes kind of a bit of a mental game. <laughs> you know? Um, I, I would, I would say, uh, yeah, maybe I, I can't remember, maybe as you pass the, the 15 mile mark, um, and you realize you have that many miles still to go. Um, I think at that point you just begin to do some self-talk to, to propel yourself to the end of the day, which still is many hours away. And so Rachel, um, wondering, was there any point, you know, was it the 10 mile mark or was it any point, even after that, where you like, what did Noel get me into? What is happening right now? <laughs> yeah, well, I knew full well what I'd gotten myself into. Um, I think definitely by about mile, I remember mile 21 very clearly. I remember the sign. I think mile 21 is when it really started to get kind of painful. Um, really, really, you know, I think as Noel said, you're really having to do a lot of self-talk. I appreciated, so the trail is so well marked and they have these signs uh, that mark every quarter mile that you've gone. And those became really important to me, those quarter mile signs. I think by mile 20, we probably weren't talking a lot. We were just on a mission to wrap this up. Um, and probably had our heads down and we're just marching forward. And I think every quarter mile, I, I, somebody would say quarter mile <laughs> and it was like another quarter miles down. And so we just start looking for that next quarter mile. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's right. I, I remember that now that Rachel says that it was like a, it was just, it was like a lifeline to see those, you know, cause you were like, I don't know, some desert island castaway or something. You just, oh my God, there's, there's the, there's the sign, you know, there is. <laughs> and you know, you've got, you're that much closer to the end because it, it be, does, it did become painful, even though I, it wasn't painful because yeah, I felt like, you know, I had the right shoes and I wasn't uncomfortable, you know, in the clothes, like the temperature and everything was all fine. And my, my shoes held up great. My hiking shoes held up great. But the those that amount of distance in a day, it, it begins to add up and, and your body begins to feel that. And yeah, in somewhere in those twenties, it was um really arduous. And um yeah, we did we were not talking much, particularly in like the last five miles. I think we probably it was like a, it was just a slow march. And we weren't <laughs> even close together. I think Rachel was up ahead and you know, I had fallen behind and and it was difficult. It was difficult. I think you were always there. I don't. I don't remember you falling behind. I think we could still talk if we had wanted to. Maybe that was it. Yeah. <laughs> we encountered a, a one other hiker. No, we encountered no other through hikers that day, but we did encounter uh, a man who, I, I guess, maybe by the look of our our expressions, you know. You may have looked anguished because he was like, "Are you doing the whole <laughs> the whole trail?" And 
Uh, we were like, yes. And we were really deep in at that point and probably feeling pretty um, like this was like, why are we doing this again? And he said, you'll remember this. Um, this will be a great memory. You know, he, he had done it and, you know, he just sort of said a couple of words of encouragement at that point, which, you know, that was helpful to know that it's some, you know, somebody as it, as I knew it would be, it would be a good story, <laughs> but in the moment it was, it was going to cost us. So were you two taking a lot of breaks along the way? Were you stopping, starting, or were you just trying to like push right through? We took no breaks. I don't remember taking that many breaks. Um, I think we even ate these deli delicious porchetta sandwiches that Noel had made uh, for us that uh, really sustained us the whole way. Um, I don't remember having to stop that often. We just, we knew it was going to be hours, hours uh, to get out of there, you know, to complete this trail. And I think we, we just kept going, not at a fast pace, just sort of a steady, consistent pace. Rachel had her charming dog, Oscar, with us the whole time. And Oscar's need for yeah. occasional snacks would give us a, a little pause. <laughs> But it wasn't. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't long. Like we didn't sit with him. You know, we we had to stop briefly, give him this little snack and some yeah. water, and continue on. Rachel, this is a game changer. I didn't know you had a dog with you. Oh, <laughs> this is did. incredible. Yeah, uh, he's always by my side. I knew he had to do this. He had to come with us. He was cheerful to the end. <laughs> Had Oscar done something like this before? Oh, no. No. I mean, I hadn't, you know. I, yeah. We were just going for it. We didn't We didn't even, I mean, we were both, phys we're both physically active, um, you know, in good shape, but we didn't do any training for this. I remember Noel saying, you know, well, how do you think we ought to train for this? And I, I just, I was like, I, I think we just go for it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I see, I was concerned that if we did a longish hike, you know, even 15 miles that we probably, or I might've talked myself out of the 30 miles. <laughs> so I felt like it was something we just had to go for. Yeah. So Oscar, no, he, but he was young and um, yeah, he was, he had a skip and a step till the end. <laughs> he really did. I think we, we we got on the trail around five and I think we um, got back into the car at six that night. Wow. So a good 13 hours. Yep. 13 <laughs> hours of just nonstop walking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Noel, toward the end, were you all fighting daylight at all? Were you trying to like pick up the pace before the sun went down? N no, I, I mean, yes. It was, it was, it would have been difficult to pick up the pace at that, just given our compromised state. I mean, we were just, it was uncomfortable. I, I was in paint walking toward the end. And, um, and so it would have been hard. I, I think what Rachel said is, is right. We, we were, we walked at a really, you know, just kind of steady pace the whole day. I don't think we ever really walked fast. Um, we weren't really dragging. We just, it was like one foot in front of the other. And, uh, you know, honestly, the, the sight of Rachel's car is something I will remember. The, just the feeling I felt upon seeing that car is something I will remember all of my days. Just, I don't know. I can't think of another time I have felt such relief. <laughs> and it was over. <laughs> like, we did we did it, and there was the car. It, it, was, it was like a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, so the time of year that we did this was, I think it was the first week of October. And it really was a prime time to go because it wasn't too hot. It wasn't too cold. The chance that it was going to rain was, you know, it probably wasn't going to rain. Or if it did, it was going to be a little bit. And the days were still longish. So we didn't have to worry about the sun going down and us still being on the trail. We had our headlamps. We had headlamps that we needed at the very beginning of the hike. But um, yeah, I was never really concerned that the sun was going to go down and we we're still going to be out there walking. Well, the Wildwood Trail is obviously a really beautiful place. I mean, I think people go there 
because it's this beautiful forested settings. Were there any points along that that really stick in your mind as particularly memorable sights or sounds or smells or anything? Not for, for me, n- not really. I mean, I think truly like the, the beauty of this experience was that, that we were outside and we were in, you know, this beautiful setting and we were together. I think we also did it on a weekday. So that, that felt to me like it made it extra much like an event. You know, I took a day out of work to do it. And, and that like kind of added to the special quality of this. And, you know, we were just surrounded by, you know, beauty, the whole walk, but the, the really the most memorable, the, the thing that made the greatest impression was, you know, spending like this long period of time with this cherished friend and getting to be outside and doing this like insane thing together and seeing it through. Cause you know, we could have ducked out at any time along the trail, you know, it is such an accessible trail and we could have gotten out of there and gotten an Uber to our car, you know, and, um, and we just persevered. So I, I, you know, I don't, when I think back on that day, I don't think of any of the, like the beautiful scenery around it. It was more like this feeling of just friendship and accomplishment going hand in hand. So Rachel, I have to ask, did you have at the end, any regrets about anything? Was there, were you thinking, oh, okay, if someone came to me saying they wanted to do the same thing, I would have done this differently. Um, what were your takeaways? Oh, I, I, I was very enthusiastic about it. In fact, I think I talked about it to anybody who would listen after we had finished it. <laughs> um, I, I absolutely loved it. Uh, just for all the reasons that Noel just listed. Um, plus, I mean, I just, I love Forest Park. i I love the sound of the birds. I love the sword ferns and the Douglas fir trees and, um, and then the smell of, of all that, you know, that earthy smell. And I think there's more oxygen in there than anywhere else around here. (laughs) So all of that is just wonderful. Yeah, no, I think I've already, I, I might have a friend who's already done it because I was so excited about it. So no regrets at all. Um, I don't know if I want to do it over again. I think I'd be up for another epic hike. And that's something that Noel and I have talked about. We just haven't settled on a hike or a time, a date, but we've talked about doing that. Yeah. Yeah. It was that, it was one of those things where it's like, let's do that again. Let's do something like that, you know, again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we were going to ask about any future adventures together. So, I mean, I know you said you haven't settled on anything, but are there any that you're kind of kicking around? If you want to workshop something right here, this is a space you can do that. (laughs) Rachel, what was the idea that you had? There's one that, there's one, there's a Wilson River Trail. Oh, yeah. uh, That I've heard about. I don't think it's quite as long, but the elevation change uh, or gain might be a little bit um, more than, say, the Wildwood Trail. Uh, I thought that might be a nice one. The Wilson River Trail is great. I want to say it's about okay. 24 miles, maybe 27. They, they just added to it. Um, it's a beautiful hike, too. I've hiked it in segments. I've not hiked it in a single day. It, again, it is a very long one, but it's similar to the, to, to the Wildwood Trail. There's a lot of trailheads along the way where you can, if you need to, bail out and uh, get picked up or... Or, you know, do what you need to do. But uh, that's a great one. I think it's a great idea. And I thought Noelle had one, too. Yeah, there was there was one in southern Oregon um, around the Rogue River. And then there was one in central Oregon that, you know, this was just me kind of poking around. And I, I don't I don't remember what they what they are now. But I, I, I think we was looking for something that would be, you know, more than just, you know, seven miles, but not 30, you know, like maybe uh, in the 20 mile range. So, because I, you know, actually when we came off of this, like the recovery for me was several days. You know, I was, I came home, first of all, I went immediately to bed <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was kind of pretty stiff and achy for like three days, 
Um, and so I guess I, I'd like to do something that's maybe, le- you know, less trauma, traumatizing to my <laughs> next time around. Yeah, I felt the same way. I definitely, my knees were, were stiff for sure for days afterwards. I was about to ask if you celebrated with some type of epic meal after you were done, or were you just piecing, going separate ways and going to bed? Yeah, basically. That's it. <laughs> the ladder. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, think I just came home and was so like incapacitated by pain that I just went to bed and like shouted down for a family member to bring me a beer because I just. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even have an appetite, but I knew I wanted to celebrate somehow, but lying down. (laughs) Even Oscar seemed a little on edge. I think he might have been a bit confused by all of that really long walk. (laughs) Well, before we let you two go, any words of wisdom, any advice for folks who may want to embark on this or a similar adventure? Take a friend. (laughs) You know, do it and take a friend. <laughs> Rachel, how about you? Um, no, well, I think just going back to what we had talked about, the direction of this trail, I, I highly recommend that people start in the south and go north and end, end flat instead of uh, ending climbing up, <laughs> climbing up to your car. Well, Rachel Noel, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, We really appreciate you sharing your big adventure with us. And I hope to hear about some more from you both in the future. That was really fun. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Well, folks, uh, until next time, you can watch our videos on the Oregonians YouTube channel and view all of our travel and outdoors coverage on OregonLive.com slash travel as well as hereisoregon.com. Please leave us a rating or review if you enjoy the show. And if you want to support this podcast, as well as our local journalism, please consider a subscription to Oregon Live. You can find details at oregonlive.com slash pod support. Also, if you're a fan of the show and you're interested in potentially sponsoring it, you can get in touch with our marketing people at advertise at oregonian.com. This episode of the show was produced by me, Vicki Connor, alongside Jamie Hale, Andrew Thien, and Elena Neal Sachs. Stay safe and happy travels, everyone. Until next time, we leave you with this 10 seconds of Zen.